So good morning, everybody. My name is attorney Mike Crotty. I'm the uh, chair of the Government Affairs Committee for the Delaware County Chamber of Commerce. I want to welcome everybody to our annual um, State House Forum. This is our first year doing it virtual, hopefully our last. Uh, it's good to see everybody, sort of. The, uh, the Government Affairs Committee, we meet monthly. We're one of the most uh, pedestrian groups at, in, of the chamber where Anybody from any business from any size, from uh, the, the small startup to the business that's been around since the uh, Civil War, which we have, uh, can come and share their concerns, talk about and learn about things that are going on from a legislative front and, and otherwise, and how we can all help pursue our interests. So again, I want to thank everyone for coming. I want to give a special thanks to our sponsors. And, the, and these are sponsors that we see time and again sponsoring these events and being really key key members of our community and key members of our chamber. So special thanks to Energy Transfer, Mars, Gowie, Eamon and Fultz, Monroe Energy, Tomorrow's Utilities, Comcast, Aqua, AmeriHealth Caritas, Brinker Simpson, Crozier Keystone, Meridian Bank, LPL, Mercy Fitzgerald Hospital, Mercy Home Health, Mercy Life, Pico, and Republic Bank. And just the other two notes, again, thank you for all those sponsors for your continued support of uh, both the committee and the chamber. Uh, upcoming events, we, we have our, the, our committee has our meetings typically on the first Friday of the month. I'm not sure if we set it yet for October, but otherwise we have the state Senate forum coming up on October 27th. I want to also thank, of course, the representatives that are here today to share their updates and thoughts and take questions. There will be uh, essentially two ways to ask questions or, or raise issues. One would be through the Q&A function of Zoom, where you can ask your question. I think that'll be addressed. And then the second one would be through the, uh, the chat function. If you want to put in your chat questions, we'll, uh, Trish will facilitate having those addressed to it. With that, I'll turn it over to our, our president, Trish McFarland. Mike, thank you. Um, I wanna thank everybody this morning for being so flexible. Uh, we wanted to make sure we continue to brought the, bring the great programming that we have, but in a safe manner. So here we are virtually. Thank you to our sponsors who continue to support us and kind of allow us to be creative with bringing this programming to our members. Just a quick overview of how the morning will work. Uh, we will have our, um, state reps speak, and in between our state reps will be um, our um, some of our sponsors, uh, our higher level sponsors will be able to uh, talk in between the state reps. So as you're um, viewing this morning, again, like we do in person and you would write your questions down on an index card, feel free to uh, put them in the chat or the Q&A as Mike mentioned, and we will get to them if we have time. If we don't have time, we will absolutely make sure that they're answered and we can email you or put them on our blog and um, communicate that with all of our members. Also, I want to thank our state reps that have been called into Harrisburg today. So we are going to keep this uh, program to an hour so we can make sure that they can get to Harrisburg safely. So thank you. Um, and without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, Leanne Kruger. Leanne, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Trish. Um, I always appreciate um, having dialogue with members of the Delaware County Chamber of Commerce. So I will be brief so that we've got more time for a Q&A because I'm curious to hear what folks are interested in hearing about. Um, but I know that this has been a really tough time for, for small businesses in Delaware County because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and I think those of us on the call have fought really hard to serve the businesses in our district and to show up every time the chamber has asked. Um, I know that and there's been a number of times, Trish, where you've called and asked us to, to speak to some of your members or um, to weigh in with folks in a particular industry. And I think we've showed up over and over and over again um, to make sure that we're in constant dialogue with, with small businesses here in Delaware County. Um, one of the things I want to talk about um, and highlight is the resources that we've all fought for in Harrisburg for our local businesses in the midst of this pandemic. Um, early on, um, you know, we were able to fight for a $100 million loan fund 
Um, that money went very quickly and not enough of it went to Delaware County. So I organized our local legislators to send a letter um, to really push for Delaware County to get its share of the pie because we had um, businesses who were waiting in the queue to submit an application for a loan and the money ran out within a matter of days. And then back in June, we fought again and we were able to get a $225 million grant program. At that point, we were all hearing from businesses that loans wouldn't be helpful anymore because no one could afford to take on more debt in this economic environment. So we fought for a $225 million grant program. Um, my office, we provided technical assistance to businesses to help them understand how to apply. We did a webinar with a local community development financial institution who is providing that grant program. Um, and then we also highlighted the Delco Strong program, which I know the chamber fought for, um, uh, another grant program offered through Delaware County Council. Um, so, you know, we've been fighting for resources every step of the way, and I know that my office has talked to a lot of small business owners in my district, and we're here to help any way we can. So, if your business is facing a challenge, please reach out to your local legislator. We're here to help. Um, we're here to help. responding to every single person who reaches out through email or phone call during this challenging time. Thanks again, Trish and Mike, for your leadership and for convening us today. Leanne, thank you so much. So at this point, um, I would like to introduce Bill Gowie from Bars Gowie, Amon and Fultz. Bill? Good morning, thank you, Trish. Um, I am Bill Gowie, managing partner of Bars Gowie, Amon and Fultz, a CPA firm based in Media and Chad's Ford. We work with thousands of individuals and business uh, owners in the area and help them with all their accounting and tax needs, as well as helping through good times and tough times like we are now uh, helping them through. I would like to uh, thank all the state representatives for taking time with us today. And I would also like to thank Trish and her entire team for setting this up and all their great help to the business community through these struggling times. Uh, we really appreciate everything that uh, you guys have done for us. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, and, and thank you uh, again for being so flexible as a sponsor for this event and uh, allowing us to do this this morning. Um, now I would like to introduce Jen O'Mara. Jen? Thank you, Trish. Um, good morning, everyone. It is great to be with you this morning. Um, I will also try to keep my comments brief so we have more time for question and answer. We got called into session at four o'clock yesterday. So I know this has been an incredibly challenging time and I just want to say that I'm sorry, it's not in our control, but I'm sorry it's got so political in Harrisburg. Um, we should have been focusing on more resources that could have helped small business owners and instead there was a lot of crap that we were dealing with and it was unfortunate but um, I've tried my best to be a partner with Trish and the Chamber throughout this um, experience. Um, Trish helped us organize a couple of roundtables with different industries so we've talked to Chamber members to see what was going on at the beginning and then throughout the pandemic. Um, I also want to thank the Chamber for helping conceptualize Christmas in July um, it was a fun way to try to promote shopping small in Delaware County, and I want to continue um, doing that. I know we have Small Business Saturday coming up in November, and I want to do everything I can to make that as successful as we can. Um, I also have started doing small business spotlights at the request of small business owners in my district. I have um, taken time to go and meet with many of them, and this was one of their ideas. So I've started doing that. Um, each week, if anyone has a small business they would like me to feature, please just re reach out to me. I'm going to head to Nothing Bunt Cake soon because I know they're a new member of the chamber and they are in Springfield. Um, so, you know, the, the, the other thing I just want everyone to be aware of is um, our budget is due at the end of November. So there's going to be a lot of different um, things going on you're going to hear about going on in Harrisburg. The budget situation is grim in Pennsylvania. We have a $5.5 billion deficit that we are facing. Um, they say it's even worse than 2008, which was $4 billion after the fallout. So we have a lot of tough decisions to make, um, and I look forward to continuing to use Trish and all of you as a resource for us so we know what 
what issues are important to you so we can try and take those to Harrisburg. So thank you so much for organizing this. Um, I'm happy to stay on until the, the end and take questions. Um, and I appreciate all of you. I know this hasn't been easy. Um, but I know you've been doing a lot to still support our communities throughout this time. So I just wanna thank you for that. Thanks, Trish. Thank you so much, Jen. I really appreciate it. Now I would like to introduce Adam Gattuso from Monroe Energy. Thank you so much, Trish. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to speak to uh, everyone today and, and for, um, for the, the uh, elected officials uh, for their service, uh, not only during normal times, but especially so during this very challenging time. Um, I work for Monroe Energy and uh, Monroe Energy is a wholly owned subsidiary of Delta Airlines. Um, we were formed in 2012 um, to purchase the train refinery, which was one of the refineries that announced closure. Uh, we have roughly 500 employees uh, that, that work directly here at Monroe, and depending on the type of, of work that we have going on at the facility at any given point, we could have 100 to 1400 members of the Philadelphia Building Trades working inside uh, the facility. We produce about 200,000, we, we uh, excuse me, refine about 200,000 barrels of crude oil per day. A couple things that are really near and dear to our uh, values here at Monroe is the safety of our operation and the team members uh, and the community in which we operate. That's vitally important uh, to make sure that we earn the trust of, of our neighbors. Our neighbors are right across the street from our facility. Uh, we, um, we do everything we can. We have teams that specialize in um, air and water uh, issues here at the, at the refinery. So uh, it's a team that just uh, you know, monitors things every day uh, and makes sure that we're running uh, in compliance. And then uh, something that our, our CEO is very passionate about, uh, he believes that our responsibility here extends far beyond our fence line. So we, we do a lot of uh, community work. And one of the things we're very proud of is providing uh, STEM tutoring uh, free of charge for students uh, in the area. It's just uh, some, some team members here uh, that, that like to volunteer their time. Um, and I guess the only other thing, comments that I'd like to provide today is, um, as the representatives have, have uh, stated, this has been a very challenging time for, especially for us, our parent company being an airline that's been hit exceptionally hard. We as an oil refinery, when the travel restrictions were in place and nobody was driving, that, that became a very challenging situation. We are some encouraging signs moving forward. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're doing everything we can to uh, ad adhere to, uh, you know, making sure that, that we run a an operation that keeps our team members uh, safe. So we have changed uh, a lot of our operational, um, you know, procedures, who's in the facility and when, uh, just to try to limit any, any spread. Uh, so we've been working with the governor's office uh, on, on things like this every day. So I, I really appreciate the opportunity today and, and thank the representatives for their leadership during a very challenging time. Thanks so much. Great, thank you so much, Adam, and thank you for your continued support through all of this. Um, and Joanna McClinton is here with us. Uh, Joanna? Sure. Joanna. Good morning, Trish, and good, good morning, morning to good everyone. Morning. Thank good, you. I'm glad, <laughs> glad to be here. I am um, from my camera being off, but I um, appreciate all that the chamber has been doing during this pandemic. Um, it is vitally critical for all of our folks, um, and especially on my end, the southeastern end of Delco and Darby and Yeadon on McDade Boulevard and Church Lane. We have had some real challenges because so many places are trying to remain open, event spaces and the like, but there are real challenges with the pandemic, but you all getting information out, um, sharing grant programs, uh, championing the Del Delco Strong has been um, such a tremendous blessing. And our office has made every effort to get all the information you share to the folks on our side of the district. But more importantly, um, as my other colleagues have already stated, you know, when we are in Harrisburg, which um, I'm myself, I'm getting ready to go as well. Um, we are working to make sure that, you know, there is a real focus on 
um, I don't want to call it a bailout, but we've seen the federal government save so many industries. So in Harrisburg, we want to save small businesses, especially in Delaware County, where they're thriving and flourishing, and we're able to shop small and even shop a little bit larger at some of the uh, strip malls and malls and things of that nature. So please know that you all have my commitment and my hard work um, along with all of our folks um, from Delco throughout the delegation in the House and the Senate to be a partner in this issue and to make sure that our folks can um, recover and as many as possible can stay open into 2021. That is the goal um, that they not just stay open but that sooner than later they'll be able to also uh, generate revenue again, uh, similar to the way they were able to do uh, before March. Joanna, thank you so much. Um, we truly appreciate you being with us this morning. And again, I, I want to thank all of our state reps for uh, being with us because I know that they were called into Harrisburg this afternoon. Now I'd like to introduce another one of our sponsors, Jacqueline Gardner from Tomorrow's, Util Tomorrow's Utilities. Jacqueline. Thanks, Trish. Um, I work for Tomorrow's Utilities. We are a small family-run business um, out of Delaware County. Our offices are in Springfield. Um, we're energy procurement specialists. So really what that means is we're an energy broker. Think of us in the same vein you would think of um, a mortgage broker or an insurance broker for your home or your business. We assist commercial, industrial, retail properties, townships, schools, even residents with savings on their electric and gas costs um, with PICO or whatever utility you're within. We work with some of the top suppliers in the Northeast to be sure that our clients' energy pricing and purchasing strategy is the best fit for their business. In addition to just your cost savings, we work with over 50% of our clients on any of their efficiency needs. So think of things like, like lighting retrofits, upgrading new mechanical systems, new boilers, anything like that. The unique thing that our suppliers offer is that you have the ability to do these projects with them with no upfront costs. So it's really, especially during these times with COVID where capital is very hard to come by for companies, this is a great program for people who are looking to keep their buildings um, up to date with the latest mechanical things or lighting to look the best. Um, we've done a lot of projects with supermarkets and even some schools recently in the area. These um, things, you get the project completed, you get the money, and then you don't start paying it back till it's done. So the key takeaway for people right now we're trying to enforce is the ability to get this capital and also we are at all time market lows. Um, so it's even though it's a hard time with COVID for people, it's a good time when you're looking at your budget to look at savings. There's definitely savings to be had in the energy market. Um, I just want to take this time to thank Trish and all of the state reps today for putting this together. We're so appreciative of everything the Chamber has done during COVID. And um, I'm also going to give a little plug. I know the Chamber works really hard because I chair the Chamber's Foundation Board. Um, and we are putting together our Leadership Delaware County program to start in the coming month. So please look for information on that if you're interested in sending um, one of your employees or things like that. It is going to be virtual. We have a really great curriculum for the um, participants this year. Thanks. Thank you, Jacqueline, and great plug. Thank you. <laughs> we will send out information on Leadership Delaware County. Now I'd like to introduce Representative Mike Zabel. Mike, and I want to uh, again thank you for calling yesterday afternoon to give us the heads up that you were called into session. Sure. And uh, thank you for the constant communication because we will uh, make sure we get you guys off safely. So thanks for, for being with us. Sure. Thank you, Trish, and, and thank you to uh, all the members of the chamber who are here with us today. Thank you for the support uh, that you lend our businesses in helping keep us running. But we're seven months into a global pandemic that none of us knew anything about. Uh, it's, it's been a crash course, I, I know, I'm sure, as business owners and operators, it's certainly been one as a legislator. And it's, even though we, some of the battles in the, in the public forefront get pitched as partisan or political battles, we're all, each and every one of us, you, me, people on the other side of the aisle, we're all trying to find the right balance uh, between keeping people safe and keeping the economy running. And we don't, it's, it's a constant battle to find out what the right thing is to do. And I really appreciate, uh, I, I think the business owners in my, my district have a sense of public responsibility and have been uh, great partners. And in, in the meantime, and in the background, we've been working hard to make sure we get them as much help as we possibly can. Uh, in fact, I'm 
introducing or, or going to be part of an, an effort to introduce um, <clears throat> another $300 million appropriation from our federal CARES funding for small businesses, uh, 100 million of which would be specifically earmarked and guaranteed for the hospitality industry. And what we're really hoping to, to, to do with this as well in order to get it out quickly is have this additional money go through the CDFI process that we've already set up for the Small Business Assistance Program. So for businesses that need it, they wouldn't theoretically need to do a new application. This is money that could just be awarded again. Uh, the governor's pushing this. I'm, I was uh, introduced this measure, or, uh, a piece of this measure in Commerce Committee, on which I, I serve as a member. And so that is just one of the efforts that we're doing uh, to try to get there. As the others mentioned, I'm an open door. Our office is an open door. We, we work, we've done work with so many of our local businesses trying to help them find solutions, ways to go. Uh, we've worked, for example, with some of our restaurants and some of our districts to expand sidewalk seating and close off portions of, portions of streets so that they can have more outdoor dining. And we got to keep trying to think outside the box on, on that sort of thing. Because the other problem we have, or part of the issue we have with this pandemic as an economy, I, I probably don't need to tell you this, is consumer confidence regardless of, of, of what measures are in place or whether they're too restrictive or not, we have to have people comfortable to fly on airplanes again, to travel, to eat at restaurants. All of that is an important part for me of getting the economy running again. Uh, and that is as much some of the public health measures are aimed at resuming, uh, restoring consumer confidence. And it's a tough, it's a tough uh, balancing act. And I am always open to feedback on that. I, I said when I was running for office in 2018, my, my previous jobs were as a teacher and a lawyer. And if I didn't know the answer to something as a school teacher, if one of my kids asked me a question, I learned not to fake my way through an answer. I will never fake my way through an answer. I will go talk to the people or, or go to the places uh, that I need to go to get the information. So please know that I do want to hear from you. I, I, I'm in constant contact with people who are running businesses in my district. I want to hear from you. I want to, we have to figure this all out together because nobody is smarter than anybody else when it comes to this. We're all trying to find the right solution, but I need you to do well. We all need to need you to do well. We need people working. We need people spending money. It's really important. So know that I'm an ally with you on that fight. Uh, I and my colleagues, I look forward to working with you. Thank you again to Trish and the chamber for convening this forum today. Great. Thank you so much, Mike. I would like to introduce one more sponsor this morning and uh, Caitlin Ganley from Comcast. Caitlin, thank you so much. Thanks, Trish. On behalf of Comcast and our Internet Essentials team, I just want to thank Trish and all of our state reps. I know how busy your time is, especially today. And thank you, everybody, for joining the virtual program. Comcast is the has the nation's largest Wi-Fi network in the U.S. with over 18 million hotspots. During COVID-19, we saw our network traffic spike up to 60% in some of our markets, but Comcast Network was prepared for this surge. While we are all focused on COVID, Comcast is working to help bridge the digital divide through our Internet Essentials program. Internet Essentials was established and launched in 2011 and has helped address the affordability gap by providing broadband service for $9.95 per month for low-income re residents. People living in low income communities are 10 times more likely to not have an internet connection at home compared to people in more affluent communities. 8 million people nationwide are now connected through internet essentials with 680,000 of those living right here in Pennsylvania. Comcast also launched our internet essentials partnership program to support those who can't afford the 995 per month. This gives a school district or community partner the opportunity to purchase internet on behalf of a larger group such as students, community members, or anyone else eligible for the program. On behalf of Comcast, we are honored to sponsor this event and we look forward to learning more from our state reps. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Trish. I am so sorry. I was just kicked off uh, <laughs> the um, fun of being virtual. And um, maybe we should up our Wi-Fi. So we should talk to Caitlin and Comcast. Um, but as I kind of uh, pull back together here, we're going to go to our Q&A for this morning. Um, and our first question, I'm going to kick it over to Mike Crotty, our government affairs chair, who has a question. And I will um, kind of regroup and get ready for the rest of the questions. Mike? 
it sounds great. And this is a question for all of our representatives. And again, thanks for being here this morning. But what are the top legislative issues that you each see moving forward with the remainder of the current term? Um, I can jump in there. So, you know, Jen talked about the budget. Back in June, we passed a 5 twelfths budget that only funds most, um, you know, most line items through November. And so, um, you know, in the midst of a pandemic when folks needed more support from government than ever before, and in the midst of a $5.5 billion deficit, I think that's the most important thing that we're gonna need to, um, to work on. Um, and I hope that we can come to a bipartisan agreement on how to make sure that essential services don't get slashed in the midst of a deficit. Yeah, I would add, um, I think the budget, given that we have not, not including today, seven session days left. I think the budget um, is going to be the top focus. Um, I do understand there are a couple other legislative issues that are trying to be worked on. Last week, there was a bill that would change the way dentists can um, bill insurance. That ended up not running, but I do think there's still some push for it to go through by the end. Um, I understand there's an agreement to try to work on CNA licenses, so to allow nurses um, to have a license across state lines. That's something that is being worked on now with the licensure committee. Um, and I know there's, you know, there's still a couple other issues. I know many of you may be interested in next week. I believe there's a bill running that influences the restaurant industry. Um, so yeah, and we're going back today to deal with a veto override issue. So that's just some of the stuff, but the budget's going to be the big, the big, big one. Thank you. Uh, so that kind of leads into my next question is, uh, what are your thoughts on why you are returning today? Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, we haven't gotten, um, we, we in the minority caucus don't actually have any official information yet to just rumors on what we're voting on. Um, we're being called into caucus at noon actually, and our Harrisburg staff are hoping to have the list of bills um, the press is saying that we're being called in to, in another attempt, there's been multiple attempts by the majority party to override the governor's um, veto of bills around public safety during COVID, and this isn't another attempt to override the, the governor today. Well, I, we don't know what's, what else is on the agenda yet. Yeah, unfortunately, the way it works is we won't get a calendar that tells us what's running until an hour before, if that. Sometimes it's 30 minutes before, sometimes it's five minutes before. So it's unfortunately, we find out more information from the press than we do necessarily from the leadership. Thank you. Um, is there a timeline to complete this year's inter interim budget? Um, and what do you, what do you see as most the most likely scenario to fill the budget gap? Um, is it cuts, increase to taxes, uh, new, care fund, new CARES funding? Can you talk a little bit about that? So Pennsylvania has about a billion dollars left in CARES Act funding, um, and the administration has been holding it back knowing that we're facing you know, what, what appears right now to be a $5.5 billion deficit. That is part of it, um, but there are no silver bullet solutions, Trish, to fill a $4.5 billion gap. And when we're talking about, you know, schools were flat funded, so K through 12 education is funded at the same rate as last year through the end of the year, but everything else like um, you know, nursing home funding, economic development funding, um, Medicaid services for our most vulnerable Pennsylvanians, all of those things are on the table and not fully funded after the end of November. Um, it, I wish folks would get to the negotiating table to start talking about this, but um, it, that doesn't appear to have started yet, at least not in a way that House Democrats are involved in. Well, and I would add, I'm not on the Appropriations Committee, but um, we had a briefing and we talked about how we fill a $5.5 billion budget, right? So a billion dollars, if we can get the federal government to change stipulations from that CARES Act money, we may be able to use, but there are some stipulations on it right now making that more complicated. Um, but I think we're going to look at, um, unfortunately, I think what's being looked at now is having the state procure a loan. Um, the treasurer is involved with if we even have the credit to do that. Um, they're also going to be looking at, I think, I don't see a tax increase passing, but I do see funds being 
cut and slashed. Um, it's just the only way to get there. And so I think that that leaves us a lot of concern here in the Southeast because we already know that despite the economic output that the Southeast offers to the state, we do not get an equal investment from the state. And so I'm very concerned about how this um, will unequally hurt our area, given our density, our um, population, and the fact that COVID hit our area of the state worse than everywhere else. And there doesn't seem to be any recognition of that when funds are being moved in Harrisburg. So um, I'm really concerned about how it's going to impact Delaware County. Um, and I hope all of you follow and please keep in touch with us as things are moving that impact your industry. Okay, so um, as we know that the hospitality and restaurant industry have been hit the hardest, uh, particularly the hospitality industry. Um, is there any relief or what relief is maybe planned for them or, or is there anything you can talk about for, for that? I know that um, restrictions were just raised for the restaurants to be able to go to 50%, but is there anything else in the works that you can talk about? Sure, I can jump in on that. There is a, I believe we're going to see, I'm optimistic, maybe in, uh, in the last week of September, uh, Rep Stevens has a restaurant uh, grant or um, bill that when I was talking about the appropriations to hospitality, uh, that would be there. His calls for 200 million, we would like to increase that to 300 million and expand it to a larger, sorry, I'm cutting off my head, a portion of businesses. Uh, and that the, the, the addition we want to put in is through is to put it through the existing CDFI process so that we can get things out really quickly. We have to make sure we have buy-in from that side on that issue, but Rhett Stevens expressed uh, openness to it uh, in, in committee. So that is something that's coming down the pike. Uh, and I, I have reason to be mildly optimistic. There's very, very few things I'm optimistic about, but that's, that's a potential source of getting some something out there. So that just passed out of committee last week. Great, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and with the unemployment industry, the unemployment compensation issues that um, you've all been well aware of, you've been working with them. Um, I know we've been working hand in hand throughout this pandemic to get um, all of the residents in Delaware County that have issues, answers to all of their questions. But um, have the recipients received their benefits? Have Is there any talk about um, the continuation of unemployment, anything different with what might happen with that or um, anything you can talk about? So I serve on the Labor and Industry Committee and we've had multiple hearings, including one just last week on the unemployment compensation system. Um, the department has said that 97% of the claims that have been filed for, for regular unemployment have been filled but it's that 3% of people where maybe there was an error in the application or it's a complicated case or they were flagged in the system for potentially being a government um, employee where you know, we are still working to get folks their benefits. Um, the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program, which provided UC benefits for folks who were never eligible for, including a lot of people who were self-employed um, and folks who were independent contractors, which I know um, helps to, to fill a need for this audience. Um, that program, there are still some issues with it. They just, um, there was another sort of fraud attack um, this week and it temporarily suspended benefits. So we, I think every single one of us in our office, I know we've helped thousands of people with their UC benefits. And if folks are having a problem, whether it's regular UC or a PUA, please reach out to your state legislator because we can't always fix it, but we can flag your case. We can push to make sure that the Department of Labor and Industry knows that you haven't been paid um, and we can try to get you answers. Yeah, I was just going to add the, um, we've been helping, again, thousands of folks as well. And we also had a lot of um, members who work in places like Monroe um, and who don't live in Pennsylvania, but they're in a union and work here. So we ended up helping a lot of members like that too. Um, the cases we still have waiting are cases where it's there's an appeal or a review going on. And once that happens, it, there's really nothing we can do because now that's between the Department of Labor and the employer um, and the individual. So we're, we're having a, we're trying to explain that to folks 
Um, but it's definitely helpful if any of you as an employer are having any un unemployment issues, please let us know because we've helped a couple of employers um, as well. So thank you. All right, thank you so much. I um, want to mention that Joanna did have another scheduled meeting, so she did have to jump off, but she sends her um, thank you to everybody this morning. Um, and wanted to just ask um, one more question about pandemic-related things. We've been in constant communication this whole time, and there's been a lot of um, aid to small businesses and large businesses. Um, is there anything that is maybe planned or anything that is in the works so that this doesn't happen again, that the businesses are not shut down? I know there's a lot of lessons learned and, you know, who could have ever thought that something like this would happen. But, um, you know, the last thing we want to see is all the businesses have to close like we did before. Are, there, are we thinking about that in the future? I'll jump in on that. I think I think everything that we're trying to do right now is trying to prevent a spike that would uh, would lead to a, to a, to complete shutdown like that. I my sense is that nobody, literally nobody, wants to wants to do that again. Um, so we're trying to figure out how life can go on in the short term um, in a way that both manages numbers and allows businesses uh, to, to to meaningfully function. So I think just about every public health measure or debate we have is geared towards that. We didn't know much. I mean, what we, I don't know about you, but it feels like seven months ago was a lifetime ago. Um, and what we know or how, how uh, what is safe and what is not safe and, 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 and how we should conduct ourselves and space things and all of that is so much different now. And I think if we, if, if we have the more buy we have from every aspect of life, safe we are in terms of uh, avoiding that. I, I don't think there's, I, I don't speak for the administration, the governor's administration, but I think there's, my sense is there's absolutely zero appetite for doing uh, a shutdown like that again. I, I, and I feel reasonably confident in, in, in saying that. But with that said, we have to have buy-in from Pennsylvanians about safety measures and reasonably respecting them. I, I think that's important, which is why we do some of the messaging that we do. Masks are important. Uh, spacing is important. I, I think people are going to learn to appreciate dining in outdoor temperatures because they get much hardier. We're going to turn into Green Bay or, or something a, a little bit more. But these are things that will help us uh, keep keep running and maybe even get stronger. That's something we want to get stronger. I, I don't want to pin everything on the hopes of a vaccine. Um, we got to figure out how we can get how we can get stronger as a businesses uh, as a business community. Trish. This is where you know all of us have a role to play. I'm so grateful every time I walk into a local business and I see their staff wearing masks and their signs on the door saying that masks are required. Um, right now, masks and contact tracing are things that we can all you know we can all decide to wear a mask when we leave our homes. Um, we can make sure our kids wear a mask and we can participate in contact tracing. One of the concerns that I've heard from school administrators, you know, our Delaware County schools started virtual and slowly but surely their, their school boards are voting um, to go, you know, to start to go back to in-person learning. I know my school board voted on that this week. Um, but I've heard from school administrators that there are folks who are not participating in the contact tracing. So if you get a call from someone at the Chester County Health Department who says you or your child has been exposed to someone with a known COVID case, Participating in the contact tracing um, process is really important for all of us. And I've had administrators tell me that they've got parents who've refused to participate. And you know, if we want our kids to go back to school, right? If we want our businesses to be open 100%, we all need to do our part in um, participating in the public health aspects of this that will keep us safe and keep other people safe. Great, thank you so much. Um, and I'm gonna remind everyone, um, if there's any more questions, uh, definitely shoot me a, a message so I can ask it. But I do have one more question before we wrap up this morning, nothing to do with the pandemic. We're talking about uh, legalizing recreational marijuana. Uh, do you support it? Uh, and, any and can you talk about any potential new state revenue that could come from that? I don't know if anybody wants I'll jump in. Uh, I support it. 
I support it. Um, I think it would bring in new revenue, but it will not be in the short term, especially it's not a panacea for our budget. It would be a program that would have to grow over time. Um, but in terms of the resources that the state spends, taxpayer dollars that we spend already dealing with uh, marijuana as a criminal justice issue, uh, that we would recoup that money as well as bring in tax revenue and frankly offer chances for new businesses and, 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 and lots of good things like that. So not speaking for anybody else of my colleagues amongst me, but I, I support it. Um, but it would take time for that program to grow into what it has in Colorado, but I think it would be a very positive thing for the Pennsylvania economy. Um, yeah, I'll go next. I want to be clear. I have zero belief that this will actually run in this legislative session. Maybe, maybe next legislative session. But just because Governor Wolf and Lieutenant Governor Fetterman are talking about it does not mean it will be any serious legislation. Um, I have personal feelings about it, but it, this is one where I would really want to make sure I hear from my district, given my district's makeup. I'm not really sure how they would want me to fall down on it. So far, I've been hearing from constituents who support it, um, but I've heard from some law enforcement members who don't. So that puts us at, I think I, we have to listen to our constituents. But one thing that Pennsylvania has as to our advantage right now, last summer I attended a conference where I, one representative from all 50 states was there and it was bipartisan. So I was the representative from Pennsylvania and I talked to representatives from states who have legalized marijuana. So Colorado, Massachusetts, Washington, and a few others. And basically what I learned from them is that when we pass this legislation, if it passes, we have to be very clear in how we and how we detail how we spend the money, um, because there will be um, there there can be huge investments made. And so some states have done this really well in planning for the revenue before they even pass the legislation, so they have a clear idea of what they're going to do. Other states didn't, and they were sort of telling us to to learn from their mistakes. So I think we're in a unique position where we can learn from other states on what they've done well. But I also think we're in a spot where we don't want to be the last to do this, like what happened with gambling in the past, because then we want Pennsylvanians driving to Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, New York, all the surrounding states. Um, and that will be revenue that we lose here in Pennsylvania. But I don't want that to be the reason we force this issue. This issue is complicated and we need to make sure we're very careful on how we handle it. And I'll weigh into because I know that this is a hot topic right now and the, it's something the Delco Times has been covering. Um, so I do support the legalization of adult use marijuana, but I think it needs to be very well regulated. Um, I think you know, the same way that we have a system that makes sure that um, minors don't get access to alcohol, we need to do the same with adult use marijuana. Um, in Washington State, adult use cannabis brought in $319 million. And in Colorado, it was $266 million. I think that is real revenue and a real opportunity. But the other thing that I will be looking for, and to be clear, I agree with Jen, I don't think that this is moving soon. I think there'll be a lot of different bills introduced on this topic. Um, if this moves forward, we need to make sure there are opportunity for local businesses and entrepreneurs. The um, medical marijuana, um, which has been working pretty well, those licenses largely went to very large out-of-state companies. And I think that this is an emerging industry where we need to make sure that Delaware County entrepreneurs really have an opportunity. Um, I've got a couple of folks in my district who you know, seem to meet all of the criteria who lost out on licenses to much larger companies from out of state. And I think we should be focusing on Pennsylvania-based entrepreneurs um, if this does move forward. Great. Thank you all so much for being with us this morning and, and sharing your thoughts on what's going on. And we truly appreciate it. And we truly appreciate you fighting for the businesses here in Delaware County. Um, so at, with that, if our state reps need to uh, log off and be on their way, we truly understand. Wanted to thank our sponsors one more time and remind everybody that this is being recorded. So if you miss something or if you want to share it with your colleagues, it, we will have it on YouTube. Um, so you can uh, check that out and um, want to make sure everybody knows that on October 21st, we will have our Meet the Candidates evening. Uh, we will do it virtually. So any um, candidate that has a, a race that is um, contested, 
we will have the opportunity for them to give a, a brief overview of who they are and what they do so they can be in front of the business community here in Delaware County. And um, we have our state Senate forum, very, very similar to this. We will have that on October 27th with our um, local state senators. So I wanna thank again our sponsors this morning. And then um, when we are finished, we will um, run our program book with our sponsors ad. So if you wanna stay on and make sure you see that, we would truly appreciate that. So I wanna thank you again to Energy Transfer, Bars, Gowie, Amon and Bolts, Monroe Energy, Tomorrow's Utilities, Comcast, Aqua America, AmeriHealth Caritas, Brinker Simpson, Cabrini University, Crozier Keystone, Meridian Bank, LPL Financial, Mercy Fitzgerald Hospital, Mercy Home Health, Mercy Life, Pico, and Republic Bank. And thank you to Mike Karate, our Government Affairs Chair, and the whole team here at the um, Chamber of Commerce. We truly appreciate everybody and their support through all of this, especially this last seven months, which has been a little challenging for everybody. But thank you and continue to, to check the Chamber's website and social media for upcoming events and at the resource for businesses here in Delaware County. So make sure you see the rest of this program book through and have a great day.